So the matchumentary is up. So just for people that are watching this, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be 100% because I've come into the office specifically to film this with this young man. But I'm actually currently in bed with cellulitis yeah. and, and on hardcore antibiotics. So I don't really know what I'm doing or saying. So how is that any different? How, how is that any different? Any yeah. So I'm going to try my best to get through this. But uh, <laughs> right. So first of all, the match entry is over. Thank God. Season one. <laughs> season one. Stop saying season one. <laughs> you 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 achieved. You you succeeded. You did your thing. You 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 performed on stage, and it went well, didn't it? I mean, there yeah, were a few problems. There were a couple of bits that didn't go according to plan. Like but, what? Like, I mean, you had some gun-related issues. There was a gun-related issue. Um, it it just got jammed. I think it. I fired the the first shot. The uh, the test shot missed the, <laughs> missed the case completely. <laughs> it came out weird. It just kind of went up, and then it. I just heard. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And there was just gas pissing out of it. I didn't know what to do. So, because that hadn't happened before. That wasn't, like, there was contingency plans in place for anything <laughs> that could have gone wrong. That was never even mentioned that that was the thing. All of a sudden, there's gas pissing out of it. For some reason, I asked the guy that I bought a box stage. I was like, that doesn't sound good, does it, Rob? He's like, uh, no. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then I literally, I don't know why, I just went and just fired it into the air and it stopped. So I was like, let's get through this then. <laughs> let's just get this done. So then <laughs> I just carried on. And then I, I, obviously I don't want to give anything away, but then something else was supposed to happen and it didn't. So then I'm like, crap. So I had to take the barrel out, get that cleaning kit, which I'm now really glad that you bought. Oh yeah, the cleaning kit that you yeah. said, don't bother buying it. And I was like, no, I'm going to buy you a cleaning kit. Yeah. And then I made you put it in the case. Even that though. saved my life. Yeah. So then I had to clean the barrel and then redo it and then... Thankfully, the second time it worked. So pretty much everything that could have gone wrong with that went wrong. Yeah. Um, but it, it worked out successfully. It, yeah. It, it, from the audience's point of view, it worked exactly as it was meant to work. And that's the thing. The one thing you need to learn about magic, and it's true for anybody that's watching this, is that the audience don't know what the route is that you're going to take. A lot of the time, they don't know the effect. They don't know the method. And they definitely don't know the route. That could have been, and I did speak to a lot of people in the audience. They thought all of that was part of the presentation to really, really? kind of, yeah. To build you up. babbling about like an idiot. Well, trying no, to figure out no, what to you do. didn't babble like an idiot. If you go back and watch it, you realise that you're actually keeping your cool. I don't want to watch it. Um, <laughs> but the point is, the audience don't know what the route is that you're taking. So they will think, oh my God, you're trying to do this to make it seem more dangerous than it actually is. Whilst in reality, you were just trying to react to every single problem that occurred. Um, <laughs> and then I and sliced the inside of my mouth open with the razor blade. You sliced the inside of your mouth open with the razor blade, <laughs> which is hilarious. It um, wasn't at the time. <laughs> it was, I can still feel it. Like even now, I can still feel it. Wow. That was bad. But that looked great. That looked great when you pulled them out. And Apart from there was only seven of them. Hmm? If you look on the string, there's only seven of them. Why? Because it sliced through the string and left the ones in my mouth. Oh, so it was still in your mouth? Yeah. Holy so crap. So it, it sliced the inside of my mouth and got stuck to the inside of my mouth. So if you notice at certain parts throughout the rest of the performance, I'm going... And it's, I'm trying hang on, to hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm trying mind. to remember the structure. Did you open with the red? No, you opened with the... the tools. And then you went into razor Then went into razor blades. So you're telling me... After razor blades, you had razor blades in your mouth for the rest of the trip. No, 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 no. Because when I did that, if you notice on the on the, the video, I do that, and then I, the case is up. So as I drop them into the case, I just go... Right, okay. <laughs> but there was blood pissing into my mouth for the rest of the show. So you can notice <laughs> at certain points, I'm like that. And it's because I'm trying to like stop the blood from dripping into my mouth, because I'm trying to talk, and I don't want to spit blood on people. <laughs> <laughs> And you know the bit of string that's left in your mouth? Mm -hmm. When I took that out at the end, it was like red, soaked. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Brilliant. That you were it able to. Bad. Nobody knew that, though. Nobody knew that from their point of view. Yeah, because the thing that if you don't know Scott, still feel it. if you don't know Scott Alexander's razor blades routine, it's the best version of razor blades that there is, bar none. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible, is which brilliant. is why I suggested you learn it. But there is an element of danger to it. I mean, you are actually Obviously. putting real razor blades into your mouth. Yeah, yeah, they are real. 
And I, yeah. and although they're dulled down, they're only dulled down. Only slightly, because I was worried that I got, I was going to get on stage and do that on the paper, and it wasn't going to cut. So I, I literally just kind of on each one. They were sharp, man. They were sharp. They were really sharp. The inside of my mate can tell you that that was sharp. That's brilliant. And I think you know the day after, or a couple of days after we did the show, uh, it was announced that Sky Alexander had passed away. Yeah, and he's one of my favorite magicians of all time and i think it was quite a tribute in a way to him that you without know, even it, realizing at the time that but two yeah. of his most well-known routines you did in your yeah, show yeah, yeah. um and it just shows what i thought about him as a performer and his creations that when i put a stage act together for you and i have a warehouse of literally everything yeah i chose to scott alexander 50 percent of the show was scott alexander yeah too. it says it all right um stools went really well stools went really well Stools went great. No problem there at all. No, not that I was aware of. Like, they went really, really well, I think. Yeah, I was worried on, uh, that you were going to mess up the vanish. Uh, but you didn't. You did it, it great. It went really well. And the kind of, it, was really, it worked exactly how it was supposed to work. So they pick a collar, lift it up, and the stool's the same collar, and everyone just kind of goes, oh, that's cute. And then the next one happens, blue, blue. And everyone goes, yeah. And then the third one, disappear, and I literally heard everyone just go, huh? <laughs> and we were just expecting it to be white and it wasn't it yeah. was not there at all and then everyone's just like what the hell and then the, the I remember the applause it's a great opening that. routine yeah. Ryland uses it to close his show but it's a great opening routine and the master prediction system oh, love that. it's your favourite trick so isn't it so much yeah love it because you know that you don't have to do anything don't have to do anything <laughs> Nope. It's cat that's worried to hell. All I, yeah, yeah, yeah. All I have to do is, yeah, fucking Googling how to spell stuff. And yeah, all I had to, yeah, all I had to do was remember my lines, which, which is what I do. Which isn't a problem. No. So, yeah, I mean, it, it suffice to say you smashed it. A lot of people asked why I was getting involved in the illusions. That was never the plan. It wasn't. But literally, just before the show started, Matt was stressing out something rotten. And he was like, "Oh, I don't, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to be able to, do, you know, I'm gonna, I'm worried about the, I haven't given the illusions any thoughts. I was being focusing on the act. So I said, look, I'll just, I wasn't dressed to do the illusions. I wasn't actually in a position where I'd actually, but you know, I, I jumped in to help you, yeah. so that you weren't a, so you weren't there to, you know, you didn't need to do them on your own. It wasn't so much how the illusions worked. I could have got through the illusions how they worked. It was the talky bits. Yeah. I, I just hadn't even given the talky bits any thought because I hadn't had to do that before, and I was concentrating." so much on the solo stuff yeah and then with everything else that's, that's going on all the other stuff that i'm doing i just i didn't have time to kind of work out what to say and i didn't want to wing it because if i'd have winged it and something went well because it's cues for stuff and other people and i just didn't i didn't want to mess it up so yeah no it makes sense you jumped in to save the day ah that's fine so off the back of it's this, good egg, I do and try. I do try. I'm sitting here while I'm supposed to be in bed filming this. That's not for me. That's for these people. For, for you. <laughs> Wrapping up your story here. Um, what what was I going to say? Yeah. So so that so the match entry is over. What did you learn from the experience? Because since then you've been booking in gigs for slightly unusual, which is your job, and you've yep. been putting yourself on gigs. I have. Yeah. <laughs> So that was a gigging magician. <laughs> yeah, I've put myself onto a couple of gigs that I can go and do. Yeah. Which is terrifying, but we'll give it a go and we'll see what happens. It's not my money, it's your money, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you must, you, must have a, your you must have a certain amount of confidence to be able to go and do that seriously, though, to say, because I know that you care about the company. And, uh, of course I care. So I, I know that I you joke, wouldn't go. I know you wouldn't go and do it if you weren't 100% confident that you could go and do a great job. I'm not 100% confident with anything I ever do, ever. But after, do, I'm thinking that if I could go and walk into fucking smoke and mirrors after only been performing magic for three weeks, then if after 13, 14, 15 weeks, whatever it is, by the time I get there, if I can't go and do a close-up gig, then what was the fucking point of going through all of that? Yeah. What was the point of putting myself through everything that we've been through over the last 13 weeks of the show if at the end of it, I'm not then a gigging magician. What's the point? Yeah. So I know it's like entertainment purposes and stuff, and it's been really funny me watching me fuck things up over the course of the, the, been the series. <laughs> but by the end of it, I have learned, and I've worked my arse off to learn the skills and learn what I needed to do in order to be able to perform these things. So why not carry on? 
Yeah, I agree. Why not carry I on and just keep keep going and keep doing it and going out and gigging and pushing myself? And it's going to be scary walking into a In gig fact, on my haven't own, you got a solo illusion <clears throat> show going on this weekend? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a close up gig, I think, and then I've got yeah, a little illusion show thing with Cap. I don't think you've got a close up gig. I think that's the following week or a couple of weeks time. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. I, I can't know. remember. Oh. There's that many gigs coming in at the moment for different people. I have no idea. It'll pop up on my calendar and I'll be like, oh shit, yeah, I've got to be there. That's hilarious. So where does magic rank in terms of all the stuff that you've done? Because you've done, you know, we've talked about this on the channel. Uh, in terms of being a performer, you've you've fronted a metal band. You've fronted done all kinds of bands. Yeah, you, you, you've, uh, you've performed... Uh, you know, you've done musical theatre a lot. Yep. You do uh, murder mysteries do. regularly. You um, obviously are currently touring with the Rocky Horror Show. I am. Little known fact, he was once a backup dancer <laughs> for Take That. Didn't want me to tell anyone that. Oh, man. But he was a backup dancer on Take That. If you go back and look very at some briefly, of Very briefly. Very briefly, but it happened. You're a backup dancer for Take That. So, I mean, obviously, that would be the pinnacle of your career. Dancing along with Bakari Barlow. Why do going, I ever tell him anything? You know? Why do I ever tell him anything? <laughs> that was a really long time ago, and it was very briefly. I also used to be a dancer for Lisa Lashies, Marky G, and Nikki Blackmarket, who were some drum and bass and hard house DJs back in the day. There you go. So, out of all of that, where does magic rank? <clears throat> the scariest. Why? Magic is the scariest thing I've ever done. Why? Because I'm like, especially the stage show, I'm on my own. I'm very rarely on stage on my own. Even with Rocky, like I've got a nine and a half minute monologue at the start, but I've got like phantoms around me, and I've got, you know, I'm comfortable because I'm literally just speaking. So it's just it's just lip, it's just talking, which I'm comfortable with. Talking and doing stuff at the same time is not something that I'm used to doing, which sounds bizarre. It sounds like anybody talks and does stuff at the same time, but when you're standing on stage in front of a room full of people and you've got to do a trick while you're talking, that for me was something that I really had to concentrate on learning how to do because I'm so used to just, when I've been practicing the tricks and stuff, looking at what I'm doing and looking at my hands and looking at, do you know what I mean? With the, yeah. the blades trick and stuff. It's the performance aspect of the trick. So when I was doing it before, you were just like, I can't see the blades. You've got to hold the blades up. And I'm like, shit, I hadn't even thought about that. So you've got to think about holding the blades up. You've got to think about making sure that the blades, once you've shown them to the girl and they've selected one, that they don't go out of sight because then it just looks shit if they've been out of sight, which I did. I put them back in the case. I remember doing that. And then I remember thinking, crap. And I picked them back up and then showed them out again because I already put them back in the case. And then I should close the case and put them down on the top. And it's all the things like that that could completely ruin the illusion of the trick. You've got to keep in mind the whole time. Yeah, It's really complicated. Performing magic is really, really complicated. It's, 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 actually, I would say it's very easy to do badly, but it's very difficult to do well. Exactly. Exactly. And that's I don't want to do anything badly throughout my whole performance career. I've... I've tried not to do things badly it happens on occasion but i've tried not to do things badly i want to do this if i'm going to do this i'm going to do this right and i'm surrounded by people like you and lloyd and nemed and all these other incredible magicians that are around i don't want to just be some some magician that's kind of like down here when you guys are all up here i know i'm never going to be as good as you and, and or nemed or because you guys have got 30 years experience on that's me, good no you're all yeah i know i'm aware of that but if i'm gonna <laughs> if i'm gonna do it if i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it to the best of my ability <laughs> and that's that to me is really scary because I've, I've always been really critical of myself no one will ever be as critical as me as i am myself and there's so many things within magic that you have to think about yeah when you're singing a song with a band you, you have to sing the song you have to make sure you're hitting the notes and you have to make sure you're putting on a show there's no staging. There's no, you have to be there at this point or be there or do, you just run around the stage like a lunatic singing the song as best as you can and putting on a show. Yeah. There's no structure to it. You just do it. With theatre, everything is boom, 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 boom. So at this point, when that person says that's something, you have to move to there. You then have to move to there, say your line. When that person moves to there, you follow them and you do weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks of preparation. And you've got 
directors and choreographers and producers and everybody's telling you exactly where you need to be at what point and <clears throat> when we go through rehearsals and stuff if i say a line they'll go i don't want you to say that line like that you need to say it like this so every even the lines that you're saying you're told how to say them mm. and everything is so boom 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 whereas with magic it's open to it's open to your own interpretation because you yeah. have to perform it how it works best for you and that is scary because mm. i'm more myself doing magic than any other kind of performance oh okay that's interesting when i'm a singer in a rock band i have to be acting a certain way because i'm a singer in a rock band mm. when i'm acting i'm the role that i'm playing whether when it be murder you're... mysteries or when you're doing backup dancing for take that <laughs> it's choreographed you have to just do what you're told to do wearing With... the clothes wearing the clothes and yeah doing the dances and looking yeah, all yeah, happy yeah, whatever yeah. so with musical theatre. Ah! I'm sorry! <laughs> that was ah. so long ago. With musical theatre, you are who you're told to be because you're playing a character. Mm -hmm. With acting, you're playing that part, you're playing that character. Yes. With this, yes. I'm me. Yes, you are. And that's scary. That's really scary. So what advice would you give anybody watching this? Because a few people have said that you're inspirational. That like there's people that are watching this that have spent six, twelve months practicing magic and haven't performed to a real person, and within thirteen weeks I you've done close-up jobs, you've done stage shows, you've performed in front of hundreds of people at the Rugely Rose, you know you you've you've absolutely smashed it in thirteen weeks, and not a lot of people are able to get to the level that you have got to. Bearing in mind, thirteen weeks ago you were the goofy guy that like. You used to just like go <laughs> at the uh, the magic tricks I showed you. You did. I actually had somebody the other day comment on a video and they were like, oh, this is so, but yeah, it was a Matt test. And it was like, this is bullshit. Matt knows everything about magic. I've seen him. And he's like, no, he doesn't. No, no, I don't. No, he really no, doesn't. No, I don't. He's just very good at blagging it. I know, just but... about enough to get me through. <laughs> so what advice? <laughs> Because it's true. It is true. Are we stopping the Matt test? No, because he's still an idiot. And yeah, I can I still fool him with There's a lot of loads stuff. Loads of shit I don't know. Yeah. You can't learn everything in 13. You can't learn everything about anything in 13 weeks. Never mind something as complicated as magic. But what advice would you give somebody? Um, just do it. I know most people haven't got a Craig Petty literally kicking them through the door of smoke and mirrors and a warehouse full of stuff and endless amounts of money. I understand that. Um, and there are people out there that have never walked up to a group of people. So, oh, a lot of people think, oh, it's amazing. He's done this from absolutely nothing. I've got 20 years of performance experience behind me. Yeah. From magic, I've come from nothing. From performance, I've got more performance experience than the vast majority of magicians that are out there anyway, because yeah. I've been walking on stage for 20 years. Yeah. So I've been on stages all over the world, hundreds of them everywhere for years. So it's, you know, I've got that experience to fall back on when things go wrong. I know what to do on stage when things go wrong. I may not know how to sort the magic trick out, but I know how to talk myself out of a situation because I've been doing it for years. Um, and the only way that you're ever going to get the experience of walking up to a group of strangers and trying to do anything in front of them is to just fucking do it. Mm -hmm. Just go and do it. If you are confident with your tricks and you're confident that you know what you're doing, the only thing that you need to then do is, is go and do it to someone. And the more that you do it, the easier it's going to get. And it's it's scary. Like, believe me, even with the ex the performance experience that I've got, it was scary walking into Smoky Mirrors. Like, I was terrified. My hands were shaking. Sitting backstage before the show. I've been on hundreds of stages. Stages don't bother me. But before, backstage before the, the, the show mean, with well, the future, I, I was a yeah. mess. But, like, you've just got to go and do it. And the, the trick that I've... I, somebody taught me this a long time ago. It was a producer that I was in a show for. And she said to me that just act confident. I was like, what do you mean act confident? I'm not, I'm terrified. She went, I know, but act confident. If you act confident, everybody's going to draw on that confidence. You could be dying inside. Yeah. But if you act like you know what you're talking about, people will believe you. Yeah, I agree. And I'm like, okay. And that's kind of stuck with me for years. So if you just pretend like you know what you're doing, like I've done for the last 13 weeks, if you just pretend like you know what you're doing, people will believe you. Yeah. If you say anything with enough confidence, people will believe you. Yeah, that's the sales thing as well. It is. You could convince people that milk's supposed to be green if you say it with enough confidence. Yeah. People will believe you, yeah. and that's what you've got to do. You've got to. If if you're really worried about 
getting out there and bumbling your words and not knowing what to say to people and blah, blah, blah. Script it. Write it down. Write down what you're going to say and then learn it as a script, as you would do as if you were an actor, which is what I was telling you about at the start of this. I wanted everything scripted. I wanted everything written yeah, down. Well, I'm a big I advocate wanted... <laughs> for scripting. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you're not scripting. at all. Scripting. And oh. that's, that's something I've had to learn over the last 13 weeks is more kind of ad-lib stuff because you never give me anything. You just went, yeah, you wrote because, it down once and just went, say stuff. if you hadn't learned how to ad-lib, you would have been buggered when the gun went wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely, 100%. The script only works when you can stay on script. And the problem with magic is a lot of the time you have to go off script. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Like, if you go out and... And the other thing is, when you're doing close-up magic, if you're not tied into a script, you can go in a different direction. How many yeah. times have you seen me do close-up magic where I start one trick, somebody says something, and I go in a completely different direction because it's based on something they've said? Yeah. That, that, again, comes with experience there, doesn't it? But if people are worried about going out there for the first time and performing magic, just having a basic understanding of what you're going to say, I think would massively help. And you can just go over and over and over that while you're performing. So if you're talking while you're, say you're doing Back in Time, that's what I did with that whole script with Brian Cox and all that kind of stuff. And it was so that I was talking while I was doing something and you, you're engaging people. So no one's got any room to, to butt in at that point. Mm -hmm. I ask people really, really, if you notice when on, I'm sure it's on one of the videos, if you notice, but if I ask people questions, they're yes and no answers. Because I don't engage in conversation with people while I'm concentrating on doing the trick. Mm. So they're like, there's a really famous uh, scientist out there at the moment called Brian Cox. Have you heard of him? Yes. Boom. That's it. That's all their input. They're still having input into it, so they're still engaged. But as soon as they say yes, wonderful. Well, he's got this video on YouTube and blah, 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 blah. So, and I knew exactly what I was going to say. And it's muscle memory. So I did the trick that many times with the double lift and blah, blah, blah. I just, it just flowed out because I'd practiced it so many times. And that really helped when I was performing live. Yeah. Because I knew what I was saying, because I'd practiced it so much, it just came out. Mm. And when it comes out like that, it comes out confident. Yeah. And when you're performing a trick to somebody and you're confident, they're going to be more engaged. If you walk up to them and you're shaking your, uh, uh, and you don't know what to say, you lose people straight away. So... That would be a good advice. Just write something down, get it in your head, make sure it works with the trick, and then just go and perform it to somebody, anybody. If, if it works and they go, oh, that was amazing, go wicked and just fuck off. Like you, but you've done it then, and yeah. then you can do it again, and 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 it's all just flight time. Right? It's all flight time. It's all I always flight say. time. What do you prefer, close up or stage? A stage, because I'm more comfortable. What terrifies you more, close up or stage? Close up, obviously. Yeah. But I do love I do love doing the close up. I have really enjoyed doing the close up. It's been amazing. It's been a, a cool experience, and it's helped me a lot. And it's made me push myself so far out of my comfort zone from what I normally do. So I'm looking forward to doing more of it. But what I've enjoyed to this point has been the stage because I just fucking love being on stage. I love being on stage. I've always loved being on stages. So that is it's amazing to get the opportunity to do that. That's amazing. And I think we should talk about, uh, very quickly, the Blackpool Magic Convention. <laughs> I can't remember any How many days did I give you? How many days did I give you to Ten learn? days. I gave him ten days to learn every single trick that I've ever created. Yeah. Or at least the new stuff. Yeah. And, and you did. And you were demmed. And I was on the stand quite a bit, but I was also bouncing on Alakazam stand and mm -hmm. running around in the bear pit with Ryan and so on and so forth. So I wasn't on there the whole time. You were on there the whole time. Yeah. Deming the whole time. Deming the, the whole time. The amount of people hands. that told me that oh, you were a Deming machine. Bearing in mind, he didn't know how to do half of this stuff. No. <laughs> Ten days ago. And he de it's not like he didn't have a... F it's not like he had a frame of reference. Like, something like... Uh, Keymaster, for example. You know, you didn't know how to do a, a shuttle pass. Nope. You didn't know how to do a switch. It's not like you'd learnt the move in another routine and you... Nope. nope. Same with chop. You'd never done any cups and balls or chop cup no, style routines at all. Nothing ever. <laughs> nothing ever. It was, yeah, it was, it was hardcore. It was literally sitting up till two or three o'clock in the morning every day again. Like running up to the show, it was like up till one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, every, just sticking razor blades in my mouth and trying not to die and just learning everything. And then it got to the day after the show, the Sunday, because the show was on the Saturday, got to the Sunday and I was like, oh, I actually get a day off. I get a day off where I don't have to do anything for the first time in like three months. This is going to be epic. And then my phone goes off and it's Craig Petty. And I'm like, fuck, fuck, <laughs> what now? What now? And then you're like, you know the, uh, the Blackfoot <coughs> Magic Convention? I'm like, yes. 
do you want to do the dealer stand? I would love to do the dealer stand. Brilliant. You've got 10 days to learn everything that I'm fucking doing. <laughs> everything that I've ever produced, you've got 10 days to learn it. Go. Bye bye Sunday. <laughs> bye bye relaxing day. Bye bye fucking sanity. And then I've got 10 days to learn everything that you've ever released. But you did it. It's a Blackpool <laughs> version. It. How did you find Blackpool? Oh, it was the best. I absolutely loved it. It was the best time. It was amazing. Like 13 weeks ago, I knew absolutely nothing. And then all of a sudden, I'm sitting in the basement bar bit of the Ruskin with Pete Turner, Tyler Lunsford, Dynamo, <laughs> just hanging out, talking about tattoos. I'm like, how did my life come to this? What happened? At what point did my life turn so that I'm now sitting here talking to Dynamo about tattoos? This is just really bizarre. Danny Goldsmith walked up to me and he's like, hey, buddy, do you want to see a coin trick? I'm like, fuck you, Danny Goldsmith. Yes, I want to see a coin trick. Let's do a coin trick. And then sat there for like an hour, just like, just what? And then he sent me emails and stuff that I can learn to how to do coin magic and whatever. Oh, it's just on. But the amount of people that came up to me and were just like, Simon Licken. Walked up to me while I'm on the stand. I'm just closing the stand up, putting the, the towel over the stand on the last day. And he walks up and he goes, hey, Matt. And I was like, oh. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, he's like my guy. He's like, he does theatre and stuff. He was in Guys and Dolls in the West End. and stuff. Uh, he just finished a 16-week run of Elf. He was I know. In, in, in the West End. I know. Like, he's, he's a West End performer. Yeah, he's one of the biggest actors, but he's also an incredible creator and mentalist. Yeah, and he just literally stood there for like 15 minutes and just gave me this solo mini masterclass on mentalism. And I literally... Tyler was uh, Tyler came walking around. I was like, "Thank you so much, buddy. I really appreciate it." Shook his hand. I saw him in the Ruskin the later on that night. I was like, oh, such a nice guy. And then Tyler walked around the corner, and I was like, "Dude!" And he's like, "What's the matter?" I was like, "I can't leave the stand because I'm packing up." But can you go down to the 1914 before I leave? Before they leave, and just get me like two packs of billy cards. <laughs> and he was like. Okay. I went, don't ask any questions. Here's the money. Just go and get me some. Because Simon Lipkins just told me I need some. And he was like, okay, okay. <laughs> so then Tyler went running down to get me some uh, get me some billet cards. So I've now got two packs of those sitting at home that I'm going to start. And he gave me these couple of these routines and stuff to do with them to practice. And I'm like, oh, my God. Who gets that? Who does that happen to? Who gets Simon Lipkins walking up to them and going, do you, wanna, do you want me to teach you some mentalism? <laughs> yes, I fucking do. Yes, I do. It was amazing. It was such a cool experience. I got to hang out with Wayne as well, which I, I love Wayne. He's amazing. I got dragged up on stage at the Mark uh, Hammer show. He dragged me up and I'm like, I've been nothing but having photos and selfies and stuff and being on film the whole time I was there. And I'm sitting there with Tyler and I hadn't seen a single show, not a single show the whole time. So obviously I was on the stand and then I was going, to, going back to my apartment to sleep for a couple of hours before heading back to the Ruskin. So I didn't see any shows, the gala show, nothing. Oh, apart from the Bear Pit. I went down to see Wild and them in the Bear Pit. But I was there for like literally 15 Bear minutes. Bear Pit was fun though, wasn't it? It was amazing. Ryan and them did great. So I go to see, the, the, go to see uh, Mark Hammer. And then I'm sitting there and he drags this girl up on stage. And he's like, what? I need a guy. And I was like, and he went, no, you. I was like, me? He was like, yeah. I'm like, for fuck's sake. This is the first time I've sat down in five days. That's but okay, cool. so I got dragged up on stage with Mark Hammer, who was amazing. I know there was like some controversy and stuff around him, and I didn't see that bit, and I don't really know about it, but his show that I went to see, he was phenomenally good. And he's a lovely guy. I met him afterwards. Really nice bloke. But who, who does that happen to? The fucking Magic Podcast Live. Like, that audience was amazing. They were so into it. And everybody that was involved in it... Was it was a car crash. Everyone that was involved in the show, me, you, Lloyd, Kaylee, um... Everyone that was actually the fucking poor sound engineer who's now got to replace all of his microphones because you pour beer all over them. Like anyone that was actually involved in the show, it was a fucking debacle. It was just an absolute car crash. It was the one of the most awkward experiences. Like the guy that got dragged up first to show me the trick. I saw him early on in the week. He's a lovely, lovely bloke. Didn't but he get covered in beer? Yeah, you poured an entire pint over his head because he didn't fool me. But he was that drunk. The only trick that he could do was a double lift. And then I knew what was going to happen. I knew. And he was like, did you? And you were like, did he fool you? And I was like, yes. Yes, he fooled Really? Yes, he fooled me. 100% he fooled me. Did he really fool you, though? Because all he did was a double lift. No, he didn't fool me. 
bang, whole pint goes over his head. I'm like, fuck. The next guy comes up, who's a really nice guy, shows us another trick. He's got a really nice like tweed jacket on, looks quite expensive. He's, he's quite well kept. He's got like nice clothes on. He does this trick and I'm like, please fool me, please fucking fool me, please fucking fool me, please fucking fool me, please God, do something that I don't know. I knew the trick. I knew what it was. I knew how he did it. But when he said, did he fool you? I was like, yes, 100%. Yes, he did. Absolutely. 100% he fooled me. Kaylee's there, just please don't pour beer over him. Please don't pour. Really nice jacket and stuff. So I was like, yes, 100% he fooled me. You didn't, but I just didn't need to pour a pint of beer over his head. Me and Kaylee were running backwards and forwards across the stage, trying to hide all this beer that was going everywhere. And poor Lloyd, fucking doesn't drink anymore and just sitting there getting drenched. The, the, the audience loved it. Everyone that was involved in the show, it was a fucking catastrophe. Everyone that was sitting there watching it, absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. And that's why we never record the podcast lives. I'm so glad it's not recorded. There was a guy that I met there um, who I was speaking to in the bus in a couple of nights. Really, He was there with his missus. Really lovely couple. Really nice couple. I spent a, like, a long time with them. And they came to the Magic Podcast Live because I went to the Ruskin to meet Tyler before we went down to the Magic mm -hmm. Podcast Live. And it didn't start till half 11. And I made sure that I didn't get there till 25 past 11. So I thought, if I walk in any earlier than that, they're going to be roping into me all kinds of shit. And I don't want to do it. So I'm going to rock up at 25 past 11 just before it starts so I can sneak in the back and sit down. And then I've got nothing to do with it. I can just sit there and watch. I walk in. He goes, Matt, come here. I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Walk over to him and he's like, I'm too drunk to do any tricks. Go get a Stebbins deck. You're going to be performing it to Kaylee. I'm like, I'm not performing. I'm, not, I'm literally just, I'm not doing it. He's like, go and get a Stebbins deck. So I'm like, fuck. I was like, is anyone got a deck of cards? And this young lad goes, I've got one. I was like, is it full? Like, is it definitely full? And he's like, yeah, I think so. I'm like, think so is not good enough for the moment, mate. This needs to be a full deck. <laughs> Has anyone got an unopened deck? And then the guy who I didn't even realise he was there, he was like, yeah, I've got it. I was like, oh, sick, thanks, bro. So I took it, went to the back of the bar. Me and Tyler were like frantically trying to sort out this Stebbins deck. And then he never even asked me to do it. <laughs> didn't even get me to do it. And that's why you don't script anything, because then you plan and you go in a different direction. I was proper panicking. But I was at the bar shaking, trying to put this... I was like, shit, I've got to perform Stebbins deck in front of all these people. Fuck, 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 fuck. You were great. People were buying me drinks and stuff to calm me down. And then it didn't even get me to do it. So, Blackpool was <laughs> Blackpool was amazing. I had the best time. I already can't wait for next year. Already can't wait for next year. Uh, it was incredible. So, so... There's so much more stuff I could say. Oh, and one more thing that I've got to say. My new best friend in the entire world is Tyler Lundsford. What a guy. Yeah, he's great. What a guy. And people were actually coming up to me going, are you Tyler Lundsford's best friends? And I'm like, yes, yes, we are. <laughs> We Tyler. spent so much time together. Midnight runs to Mackey's and stuff. It was yeah, great. Yeah, Tyler's amazing. Tyler's what a really, guy. Tyler's, Tyler's a guy. really great guy. Awesome. So Blackpool was amazing. Yes, you it know, was. And, and you had lots of people saying how fantastic you were, rightfully so. So <coughs> the future... Did you hear that? Is that a compliment? <laughs> I think so. Was that a compliment? You do realise I'm delirious at this point and I don't know what yeah. I'm saying. Um, and, and <laughs> antibiotic. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm literally... I'm so fucked. Um, I need to go to bed. <laughs> Michael dragged me in. He's like, you've got to do this video. I'm going to make this video go for as I'm, long as possible. I just, just, wanna, <laughs> just until he drops. I just want to wrap this shit up and go home. Um, let's just finish off by talking about season two because it is happening. Although it's going to take a couple of weeks to get there because I need to recover. Um, but, but season two... Matt's mission to the magic circle. I thought we were going to scrap that because I genuinely didn't even have time to go down and see them. doesn't matter. I'm taking you to the magic circle. Do you know Drew went down to speak to them? Yeah. No? Okay. Do you know Drew? Yeah. Gimmick man Drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He went down to the magic circle stand mm -hmm. to speak to them specifically about us doing what we're doing for season yeah. two. And what did they say? Apparently, they're all for it. I thought they would be. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And he went, no, I've just been down to speak to them. And luckily, they're really happy about luckily, it. Luckily... I've got Megan on speed dial. Of course you have. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a red phone in my, in my office. <laughs> Does it send out a signal? <laughs> yeah, it's like, like an ace like, of hearts yeah. into the sky. <laughs> That's the magic circle logo. <laughs> <laughs> and then somewhere, Megan goes, oh. Yeah, yeah. Craig needs me. I must go now. 
<laughs> so I've got this big red phone, and uh, you know I can pick it up, and I can. It's a it's a direct line to the president of Magic Circle. I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. start this up. I think it's gonna be really good to, because people think that it's very difficult to get into the circle, but it's not as long as you are prepared for it, and as long as you you treat it the audition process with the respect that it deserves. It's a bit like going on stage. If you wing it and you don't prepare then you're not going to do very well on stage. But as you know, we spent 13 weeks getting to a point where you went on stage, and even though there was a few minor hiccups, you did great. So the Magic Circle's the same thing. And I hope that by doing season two and getting you prepared for the Magic Circle and getting prepared for an audition, it will hopefully show people that going into the Magic Circle isn't this scary thing that's completely impossible, but you just have to approach it the right way. It is scary. Yeah, it is scary. But so was walking out on stage. So was being a part of the Magic Podcast Live. So was doing a show in the Rugeley Road. So was going to your first close-up gig. So was going to your first illusion show. So was Deming on the Magic TV stand and learning everything that I did. Everything is scary. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. So man the fuck up. <laughs> Grow a set of balls. Season two is coming soon. And it's going to be Matt's mission to the Magic Circle. And it starts with me taking you down to London as a guest. And we'll go oh, to the Magic to Circle. Again. And yeah, I'm going to uh, get you to sign up there and then, and then we're going to go through the rigorous process. And then we're going to, I'm going to see if I can get the Magic Circle's permission to film your audition as well. And we'll... Uh, They're not going to let you film in there. I think that they might. They're like filming inside Buckingham Palace. I think the place they... is amazing. Can I get a selfie with Sooty? Yes, you can get a You know they've got a real Sooty? <laughs> remember Sooty? Yeah. The puppet. They've got the actual Sooty. <laughs> they've got a real Sooty there. Like the Sooty. It's true. He's amazing. He is. And they've got um, Houdini, you know, Houdini's handcuffs. The yeah. real ones. They've got them there. And one of his straight jackets. I literally just spent like three hours. In other news, you know what I just bought Ryland? What? A straight jacket. I mean, that could come in very handy. He wants to be the first world's first kid escapologist. I mean, does Sarah know? Yeah, she's into it. Because it's a straight jacket. I think so, yeah, but I've bought him a load of chains, handcuffs, straight jackets. It's very terrifying because every time he goes and has a bath now, he holds his breath and underwater as long as he can. He says he's training his lungs. So he's, uh, he's going to become the world's first kid as he, he says that by the age of 13, he wants to be the new um, basser. I mean, that, that worries me and he's not my kid. Yeah, it's fine. What can possibly go wrong? Anyway. I mean, you've got another one. So. Exactly, I have a spare. Now, um, <laughs> poor thing. <yeah. laughs> I've got to spare. I love it a bit. <laughs> anyway, so uh, season two, keep watching the socials. It'll be coming soon. Matt's mission to the magic circle. I need a couple of weeks off to recuperate and fix my leg, but uh, we'll still have content coming up on Magic TV almost every single day. Uh, but Matt, honestly, seriously, congratulations, man. You smashed it. Now, Thanks, uh, I've got one more thing that I need you to do. Fuck off and sell some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See you again soon. Bye, everyone.